Well, welcome to Where Hawaii Eats. My name is Ann Lee and I'm the host of the show. And I wanted to introduce Chef Paul Rivera from Executive Chef Paul Rivera from Hula Grill Waikiki. Chef Paul, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me here. He's going to be making an ahi taco poke, ahi taco poke and you're going to be making it from scratch? Correct. Wow, okay. Can we? So, okay, so start? first of all, this is one of our most popular dishes as far as our pufu goes. When people come here, we always suggest that they try this because number one, what's better than fresh ahi than from our back door? So we're going to go ahead, I'm going to show you how we make our, our poke dressing. We use our kikoman shoyu, one cup, and then um, two ounces of sesame oil, half a teaspoon of red chili flakes, a pinch of salt and pepper, and you just let that marinate a little bit, and that's it for the poke dressing. Wow. And then for our garnish, we're gonna put our topping, we're gonna put our wasabi aioli. So it depends how hot you like it. You could put a lot more, but we try to keep it more uh, mellow for our guests. So we have wasabi powder. So that's then, wasabi powder. Yes, wasabi okay. powder. And then lemon juice. Lemon. And then we put our... Wasabi, just wasabi powder, right? Yeah, and wasabi then... powder. And then uh, mayonnaise. The mayonnaise. And we just go ahead and mix all this together. Um, this is a ahi poke, ahi poke taco, ahi poke taco. Like an actual taco. Like an like actual a taco, taco shell. Right. Not taco like octopus. Like, yeah, <laughs> correct. So this is our wasabi aioli that we have here. And then next I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and, uh, ahead of time, you can go ahead and get these um, Mandu pot stickers, and they sell these molds where you can drop it in the fryer. Um, if not, you could probably just use like your spatula and drop it in and kind of hold it in for a little while. But these are how we we do it. We have the these little molds. So the mandu, mandu pot sticker is actually the mandu shell, right? right yeah. And so you can drop that into the fire and create the mold of the right, taco. Yeah. Three fifty ah. for about two minutes. Nice. So first of all, what we're gonna do is we're gonna get the the ah here. I'm gonna cut it into nice size cubes. The main thing is. Just cut it enough that it, it will be able to fit into the pocket, the, the mandu shells. If I'm on the mainland, what do I look for for good ahi? Um, preferably, you want to go by color, texture, and um, taste. Smell? And smell, oh, obviously, yeah. So these are about the, the right size we want to put in here because mm -hmm. we want to be able to fit it into the taco shells. Okay. So next what we're going to do is we're going to take that, put a little bit of salt and pepper, and then we're going to put some green onions, and then Maui onions. Maybe like a quarter of a cup? Yeah, so these are like half an ounce each with um, six ounces of What if you can't get a Maui onion? You can use regular onions, if you have, or red onions. You can use red, so yeah. just an onion, but you prefer yeah. Maui onions. Maui onions, because we, we want to promote local. So we already have our dressing in here. And we're just going to put it in here and let it marinate. Is that this? Yeah, it's a special <laughs> marinade. Okay. Can you, can you uh, remind us what's in the dressing? So in the dressing is shoyu, ses sesame oil, chili flakes, salt and pepper. Now it's Very better to mix it to order because if you make it ahead of time, it tends to, um, the acid tends to cook the poke so it's not as fresh looking. That's why we always do it to order. Okay. Nice. So now we're ready to go. We're going to go ahead and start plating. Ah. Okay. So this is a good quick dish. A lot of people like it because it has a lot of the flavor profile that people are looking for. Mm -hmm. It has a little bit sweet, a little bit vinegar, has a little bit of crunch. So first of all, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and um, put some avocado on top of our plate. Avocado mash is just pretty much just fresh avocados. Mash it up with a little bit of, of lemon juice. And this is on the regular dinner menu? This is on our, yeah, this is on our regular dinner menu and our, our poo-poo menu. Okay. Awesome. Then we're going to grab our shells. And we're going to put one ounce of poke per, per order. 
One else doesn't look a lot, but if you look at it right now, it's so full. See, it's so filling. Nice. Look how beautiful that is. Beautiful, beautiful. The ahi, the color of the ahi is very vibrant. This is. Have, while you're plating that, can yeah. I try one? Um, yeah, well, let me finish it. <laughs> You can try, I'm gonna finish the second one. Okay, so this is how one okay. of it goes, and there we're gonna to top it up with our wasabi aioli. <laughs> okay. Okay. So thick. Okay. We wanna thank Chef Paul Rivera from Hula Grill for joining us today at and at the Outrigger Waikiki Beach. Thank you guys for watching today. We'll see you next time. Toast. Cheers. Cheers. You want to put some avocado on top wow. of that? Very delicious, crispy. Ice, I are here is amazing. Fresh, crunchy. Super good. Good job. Thank you. Welcome to Where Hawaii Eats. We are in Kailua Town at Goen Dining and Bar, one of Roy Yamaguchi's restaurants. Joining me today is Executive Chef Russell. Thank you so much for, do you go by Russell or Russ? Russ is fine. Thank you for joining us, Chef Russ. Thanks for having me. Um, these are some new dishes that I don't recognize you created for us to, to eat today. Can you tell me what you've made? Yeah, absolutely. Um, a couple of our crowd favorites, and then we have uh, one new. Um, this is uh, one of our crispy Brussels sprouts. Uh, it has a zatar Greek yogurt and some cashews. Uh, it's a classic sashimi platter. And then we have our, our house fish and chips. It's a beer batter fish and chips uh, with some sweet potato fries. And this is actually a new, it's a whole roasted bronzino uh, with some tomatoes from Lanai. And then it also has like the grilled kamas, and then it has a Parmesan dashi. Wow, that is beautiful. Thank you. So did you create this because the I guess the produce was Yeah, the inspiration ready. was the was the tomatoes and then you know we, we had some really nice bronzino in and just kind of a really nice match. So you just you just whipped it, you yeah. just whipped it up. <laughs> okay, let's try. Sure, for sure. So the name Goen What does Goen mean? Uh Goen is uh, it symbolizes community and it's just really it, it it just means a place of uh gathering for friends and people to come here and make new friends. Do you want to start with this one? Yeah, that'd be great, actually. Okay. Slide this one. So you've been doing this for quite a while. And how did you get to this career path with Roy? Uh, I started off in some small sushi bars. Um, and I never really thought that I was at Roy's caliber. And then one day I got a, a part-time spot in Hawaii Kai and really just took off from there. I really put my head down. And um, Roy took me under his wing. And then it was just pretty much all downhill from there. And, Downhill. No, uphill. <laughs> <laughs> it felt, it, it felt like it, <laughs> it, uh, it, was, it wasn't easy, but uh, it, was, it was definitely um, it was, uh, it was a quick rise. We definitely had to, you have to learn fast and you have to, you have to move fast. And so I uh, made sous chef and then traveled around with Royce for a while and then eventually became executive chef. Congratulations on that. Oh, thank you so much. So where did you grow up? Uh, I grew up right in uh, Kaneway, one town over, not a few, uh, a few miles from here. Yeah. So east side side yeah and so you knew you wanted to be a chef I knew I wanted to cook I never considered uh, being a chef I just never thought it was on the table for me um, but I, I definitely jumped at it when I you know when I got the opportunity okay let's try this what type of fish is that this is um it's a Dover sole that's yummy thank you very good good and good interpretation of fish and chips Thank you. Um, do what? What type of crowd gathers here? What's your? What is your clientele base like here? You know, we have a really um, broad range. You know, we have a younger crowd. You know, mm -hmm. really into like cocktails and poo-poos, all the way up to, you know, maybe mom and dad and grandma and grandpa and whole families that come together. So it's really neat. You know, you see like different parts of different families coming either separately or all together, and really it's just kind of a. It, you know, it's a good match for any type of you know crop. So pretty much anybody. Yeah, for sure. Like fam, like kids. Absolutely. Or oh, keiki to kapuna, basically. Yes. Uh, Roy is definitely big on uh, making sure we always have like a kids available option. You know, that's all of his restaurants. You know, kids are a really important part of 
making sure. What, what, are, what are the kids' offerings here? So we have a we have a, actually a, a kinky prefix, and this is the first time I've ever seen one in is the kitchen. Is that right? Yeah. We, um, we do like a first course like quesadilla, something really like easy and accessible for all kids. Mm -hmm. Some fish. Thank you. Of course. Um, and then it also includes, uh, you know, and it has a, a few mains. You have like choices like really, you know, like um, healthy, but, um, you know, kid-friendly choices like pasta or fish, um, a little bit of beef. And then we also have a, a little small dessert too with ice cream and cookies, of course. Um, a big push for Roy too is making sure that, you know, like it's a balanced meal. Mm -hmm. So um, a lot of it is also from Denise, you know, um, her influence from Hawaii Egg. We incorporated a lot of like um, fresh local veggies and salads in the, you know, into there. Really gets kids used to seeing a lot of that too. Oh, that's very important. This is delicious. Thank you. Is this something we're gonna put on the menu? Very soon, hopefully. Um, we're kind of in the testing phase right now, mm -hmm. and um, just want to see what you guys think about it. I, I don't think you make a bad meal. <laughs> Thank <laughs> this you. This is really, really good. Thanks. Okay, this is very delicious. I can see why you, you were able to put that. The, the flavors, I, I understand. I understand the flavors, it's very good. Well, um, you know, we were kind of, we wanted some type of broth and obviously one of Japanese influence, a very Italian Mediterranean dish. Mm -hmm. So dashi and parmesan, it sounds kind of odd, but it really worked well together. Chef, I would like to really try the fish because the fish looks so fresh. Can you tell me which, um, what what fish we have here? Yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, this is a really like just classic crowd favorites, my favorites, um, just ahi, hamachi, and salmon. And then we have a spicy and a crab temaki. And really, it's um, just like the simplest of it, and there's not there's no real frills here. It's just fresh fish and nothing to hide behind. So, so that wasabi leaf. Mm -hmm. Did you did you hand carve that? Yeah, actually, uh, it's just it's just something. I something. knew it. <laughs> I totally knew it. Just trying to be cute. <laughs> that's that's pretty impressive. Thank you. Okay, I am going to try this without anything. Very fresh, very Thank good. You. Where do you get, where do you get your fish from? Um, we support uh, a lot of our Hawaii, uh, our local Hawaii fishing fleet and local fishermen as much as possible. And I, I believe that supporting them is is supporting them when the catch is really great and they have a lot of fish and buying as much as possible and only buying local. But also too, maybe when the auction is low and boats can't go out, you know, we support them in other ways by you know maybe them not doing fish for that time, but. You know, we're right back to support them when, when the catch is thriving. So there is a whole, there's um, a continuity in the intention of all of the different restaurants that Roy's has. And it's a farm to table, support local. Um, it might be a little bit more costly to support local, but that's something that has been consistent even through the pandemic. Is that kind, that's your philosophy as well? Absolutely. Um, and that's, that's through adjusting the way that we, um, we either price the menu or we word the menu, um, depending on what the farmers can harvest. Um, thank you. Uh, a long time ago, we realized that you know, like I can dictate the menu as much as I want, but really, it doesn't matter if it doesn't grow in the fields or if it doesn't come from the ocean or from the pastures. Or you know, um, so whatever they produce, we try to you know utilize as much as possible. So, a lot of it is what our farmers and our fishermen are are catching and producing that really I use as an inspiration. And for me, that's that's one. It's a, one of the greatest challenges, but it's the most fun part of the job. Well, like how you created that dish. Exactly. Uh, you know, Lanai tomatoes were just kind of a surprise, but, you know, it was, it was a blessing. You know, it was, it was really awesome to see produce coming from Lanai. I mean, I've never even had anything come from there before. Wow, that's, that's amazing. And they're, they're, be they're beautiful. They're big. So what is your favorite item on the menu? I think for me, is, um, I definitely love the fish and chips, I gotta say. It's a guilty pleasure. It's, um, I've always loved fish and chips, like fried, battered. Um, we took a long time to find the batter that we like. Mm -hmm. um, and this is one, it's actually made with beer and vodka. Um, you can't taste any of it, but um, for me, it's one of my, one of my all-time favorites. Beer and vodka. Mm -hmm. Why the vodka? I don't mean to geek out or get nerdy, but um, <laughs> uh, vodka actually has a um, lower evaporation um, temperature than water. Mm -hmm. So when you cook into the fryer, it evaporates quicker and it gets crispier faster. The Brussels sprouts are very good as well. Is Brussels sprouts are a constant on the menu. I actually, yeah, um, we, uh, we change them every once in a while, but we found one that we really like. This mm -hmm. is actually with some Greek yogurt and za'atar. It's a Mediterranean spice. Um, 
I like the yogurt just kind of, you know, like when the Brussels are hot and crispy, mm -hmm. the yogurt has a really nice cooling effect on it. So I think it's a, it's a good contrast. And some toasted cashews, it rounds it out nicely. No, oh, it's very delicious. Thank you very much for doing the show. Thank you for having Thank me. Thank you for watching Where Hawaii Eats. Um, cheers to you. Cheers to you. Real quick, how can guests find out more information about Goin? Um, they can go to royamaguchi.com or they can call the restaurant uh, 263 Goin. Very cool. Thank you so much. Thank you guys. Here with Jason Wong, president of Cisco Hawaii. Um, and Jason, I wanted to ask you about this restaurant rising program that you offer to the community that, that especially um, food service industry businesses, and they don't necessarily have to be a Cisco customer. Can you tell me a little bit more about what programs you offer? Yeah, sure. So Restaurant Rising is actually a national campaign by Cisco for U.S. and Canada, if you can imagine. Um, our operators, our restaurant customers um, are struggling and pushing them to the brink of going out of business. I think the latest numbers are 25 to 30 percent of restaurants may not make it. So what Cisco has done in this second wave that's really hitting the mainland right now, and Hawaii's a little bit on the opposite end uh, now, but doesn't mean it can't come back, is that Cisco rolled this restaurant rising campaign to, again, what can we do to help our operators get through um, this pandemic? And Cisco, it's not just about our customers. This is an industry-wide issue. We need a healthy food service industry for all of us to thrive. And if you know that restaurants are kind of, we all have friends that own restaurants. This is one where there's 900,000 restaurants in the US and mostly small businesses. So Cisco's taking a position that, how can we rise the industry out of this, I mean, historic downturn. I've been in the food business over 20 years I don't think I've ever thought I would face a day where the business is down over 50%. And I know it's down even more for our friends on the neighbor islands. It's been more for people in shut down areas like California and uh, the Seattle area. It's, it, it's brutal. So Cisco is putting all its resources behind how do we help the industry as a whole. So there's there's different types of segments, and there was a lot of thought that went into this to help this industry. Um, fast onboarding, what is, what is that? Yeah, so we want to make it really easy to help people right now. So we just we just waived all delivery minimums, made that really easy. So if, if, you, if you need five cases of product and that's what's going to get you through doing your takeout or your curbside, we're going to be there for you. If you're not a Cisco customer, um, I'm a little embarrassed to say it. We didn't have the best onboarding process before. We were a little clunky, okay? But, um, but we were, we've committed to get, if you're a new customer and you need help and we, you need to get product, we're gonna get you on in 24 hours. And we're gonna do that because we just started accepting credit cards, which I know sounds a little dated. Um, we're, we're an old industry, but we're moving and we're changing and changing with the times. So getting those credit cards, getting somebody on board in, in 24 hours, waiving those minimums, make it really easy to work with us and help prop up whoever we can and to get through this together. It, it's really important to us. Well, with this pandemic, it's allowed you the time to be able to be extra efficient and take care of your customers and new customers. So we have a whole website, Cisco Foodie, and if you go to um, rising.cisco.com, it'll take you to these resources and you don't have to be a customer. This is for the industry. So you don't, you do not have to be a customer of Cisco. We, again, we're trying to prop up the industry with all the knowledge, all the great resources we have and just share it out because we need a healthy industry. So there are things like how to make your in-room dining more efficient because if you're at a 25% capacity, there are specific ways to lay out tables, things you can take out to get more tables and still stay within regulation because we have to do it the right way to beat this pandemic. We also got to keep our operators going through this thing. Um, there are things about how to bring out curbside pickup, you know, things that are commonplace for some of the larger chains, but how do we get our smaller mom and pop independent operators to put this in? 
So you can go online, you can download templates for signs. And so you can put those signs up in your parking lot. There are pamphlets on best practices, how to sanitation methods for improved spacing of the tables. So there's just a ton of information that our corporate team has put out there for anybody to use. So circling back on that, how you help the, the business, the, the restaurants, um, their delivery services, I know that um, they're kind of spread thin. I think small mom and pops don't have the capacity to be a delivery service themselves. So there is some kind of partnership with Uber Eats that you also have. Yeah, so part of the Restaurants Rising campaign is we have several third party relationships. So we leverage the scale of Cisco with these third parties and get discounts out for our operators where they might not be able to do that on their own. So we have about, if you look at just the US and Canada, we have over 400,000 customers. So we give a little nudge to our partners and Uber Eats is one where they waive their activation fee, make it a little bit easier for our customers to get into the delivery business. Because at this point, every item counts, right? Every sale counts. Our customers are trying to hang on through this pandemic and we're only, you know, we're months away from this thing. The vaccine's coming, we're gonna get through this and whatever we can do that just one extra case that they could sell just to get to the end there and let's get back to some normalcy for them and not, not have them lose all their life savings. Sure, no, that's, that's an amazing program. Um, there's also, you know, the, the free restaurant marketing tools that you kind of touch base on. Um, can you give me a little bit more insight on what that looks like? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's everything on how to work within the pandemic and within the regulations across the country, and they do differ, but how to put in patio dining. You know, it could be something as, you know, putting in the heaters. You know, as things are getting colder in some parts of the country, we don't have that issue here in, in Hawaii. So maybe the patio dining heaters are not going to be applicable. Well, in Wahiwa, I would say, or in North Shore, it's a little chilly. I mean, it's all perspective, <laughs> right? <laughs> but there was patio dining. There's, like I mentioned, curbside, how to implement curbside. It's really any, where, where are these little nooks of value that we can help get all of the independents find, you know, squeezing every dollar out of the current environment. And again, I, I don't want to say it, 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 this is not profit driven for people. This is, this is survival. This is people's businesses that they built over 30 years. You know, I've spent, my friends are operators. That's who I know I spend my days with. And they have been struggling to get through this pandemic and thinking, hey, we're, even when we think we're a month away, we get another wave or something else happens and it's how far can they stretch this out? So. What I love about Cisco is we put our full weight and resources behind it. No cost to anybody. Come on and use anything that you need and if it helps your business, we're happy. What was that website again? So it's rising.cisco.com. And you don't have to be an existing Cisco customer. It is open to all food service related industries. It's open to anybody. So you, even if you're not a restaurant and you wanted to go on there and check it out, you can check it out. Oh. And if there are any problems, you can just call me. I'll get you on there. Where Hawaii Eats is presented.